Good afternoon and welcome to our latest webinar and thanks for joining us after our little Easter break and uh, we're good to be back. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at some of the changes that have happened to Microsoft Stream and how we can better handle videos across SharePoint, particularly thinking about in the L&D and in the communications community, but this really can help any, any department. So again, Many of us have been using uh, much of the Microsoft products and including Stream over the last few months and years uh, since it's come in place. But a few months ago, there was a significant change to how Stream works and it changed the way that video could be used. And what we want to do today is take you through what we found from the use cases and how to use it better. And I'm joined by Mike Carly Freeman, our l d lead, who's going to take us through perhaps the best ways of having to use it. Then we'll come back to myself a little bit later on to talk about how to manage those files. So Mike, over to you, please. Thank you, Dave, and, and hi, everyone. As, as Dave mentioned, Stream has been part of the, the Microsoft offering since we've all um, sort of started to embrace it a couple of years ago. But there are some significant changes that are taking place that I think, as Dave has mentioned, we want you to be aware of. And there is so much more that we can talk about that when Dave and I were pulling this um, session together, it, it had the potential of going on for another sort of 30, 40 minutes. We appreciate you already got the 30 minutes. So some of the key points that we wanted to get across, and this, the first one as it says on the slide, the traditional or classic streams it's known retires on the 15th of February, 2024. So if you talk to your Microsoft customer success managers or uh, anyone within Microsoft, they should be encouraging you to migrate any content that you might have on the old stream um, environment into what we're going to be sharing with you today, which is around the SharePoint side. Because once the uh, deadline finishes in 2024, that content, if it hasn't been migrated, will be lost. And as you can see on the screen, there are so many different things that we can now do and will be able to do when we look at stream on SharePoint. I think for me that there's some, there's some key points that we want to remember. When we had stream classic, it was a completely standalone product and, it, and it, th there were some real challenges and difficulties of integrating the content from stream classic into sending out um, copies of the, of the videos or incorporating it into your normal day-to-day -day activity. The beauty of the new uh, stream on SharePoint is it now becomes part of the Microsoft suite of opportunities. So it becomes far more easier for you to share your videos, to, to distribute them, to add them onto things like um, Viva, if you have the, the Viva uh, suite of tools. But perhaps from your point of view, it gives you an opportunity to share, to collaborate, and in fact, to work with it as you would with any of the Microsoft um, tools like Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And as you can see from the screen, that there are some so there's some really good opportunities there around how we uh, create the content, how we edit the content, and perhaps more importantly, how we share and develop that content. So what we've picked out is just three different areas that you may find interesting and useful, not only from a um, L and D point of view, but also from a communications point of view, and just generally. So if we can just go on to the first example, and having um, sort of tried to do these in the past, and those of you that remember some of my um, attempts in the uh, previous uh, events, um, I decided to actually record this one rather than do it live because the demo gods always work against me. So the first one we're looking at is how we save a stream uh, recording into your drive. Now, as we'll see as the slide comes through, So we should be familiar with the fact that when we have, a, when we record a meeting or an event, when you look into the chat at the end, you will see that there is a recording available. Now, what we can now do is very simply move that into our SharePoint site. As you'll see, as the cursor moves along, you've got the opportunity to copy. You then select the file and the location that you want this recording to take place. You click on the link, download, and then as the, the slide um, works, you'll see that it's, in, you are in control as to where you want it to go. And I think that's another key point I wanted to raise at this point is that when you are looking at the security around um, Stream in SharePoint, you decide where it's hosted, you decide who has access to it, and you decide how you want to share it. So very, very similar 
to how you would share, I suppose, store a Word document, a PowerPoint, and so on. So hopefully you would have seen as the, the slides go on, it's a very simple and straightforward identifying the file and folder where you want your uh, recording to go. You press on the, on the copy, it then downloads into that environment. You have the opportunity of playing it in the, in the format that you want to do. Click on the link, and then hopefully we should see in the next bit of the recording, um, the recording actually plays and it's there. So it's there, it's in your SharePoint, you have that opportunity to distribute it as you want to, um, but perhaps more importantly, you keep the security of the um, information as you want it to. So that was um, saving a stream recording into your drive. The next one that we're looking at is adding chapters into your stream recording. Now, this will be really beneficial for if you've created a recording that you want people to go to specific parts to. They do have the opportunity of playing the whole thing, obviously, but from say for example from an L and D point of view, if there's a specific task that you want people to focus on, you can tell them jump to chapter three. So as you can see on the slide now in the demonstration, once you've saved your recording, you start receiving an, or you have access to a number of different options, and one of those is add chapter. Now, if you've gone through your recording, you'll know where you want people to um, go to, and you can actually insert your chapter either by dragging the little cursor along the bottom as it just showed there but also you have the opportunity as you can see where you can control where you want that um, chapter to start you click in the area you type in your title and then once that's all added in you add it and that's created that chapter you can have as many chapters as you want obviously making it relevant and uh, worthwhile for the the viewer I think I've only just added two chapters in here, but it provides that bookmark, it provides that place. So if you wanted to skip the introduction, because if it's one of my videos, you know that Mike Kelly Freeman waffles a lot, but you want to go to the core content about how to insert the spreadsheet, you've got that chapter there, you'll be able to click on it, and then you move across. You have the flexibility, you have the opportunity to create that more user-friendly um, option. Very, very simple very, very straightforward to do. So that's adding a chapter into your stream recording. And I think it, as once you've played it, you then can just see where you uh, jump to. The final thing, and this is again, one of the beauties of, I think the, the 365 opportunities, that ability to collaborate. And so instead of sending things backwards and forwards to people and coming back and saying, well, we should be doing this and should be doing that, you can host it into a channel, host it into one of your teams, and then the people who have access to it can collaborate at any time. The same thing now is available on Microsoft Stream Recording. So as we um, start the, the recording here, again, one of the options down the, the right hand side is add comments. What this then enables you to do, and as the, the, the screen will show, is that as you're looking through and you think, right, OK, at this certain point in time, I think we could re-record a point or we could elaborate on how someone could um, access a spreadsheet or access the particular chapters. As you can see from the, the demonstration just then, it works very, very similarly to all of the other Microsoft 365 applications when it comes to collaboration. You can identify who you want the comment to go to, you type your comment in, you press OK and it sends that comment off. And what will happen is that a notification will then be received by the person who owns the document. Again, very similar to that collaboration piece. With regard to stream, I think just as a tip, because the, the comments all come through um, in one area, might be useful just to say, right, at nine minutes, 50 seconds, I think we could do this, or at 11 minutes, 40 seconds, we can do X. It just helps that collaboration piece. It gives people an opportunity to go and have a look and maybe add their comments too. But it does speed up the whole process. Also worth noting is that if you're adding someone um, into the comments, like I've just done with Tom Connor, and you wanted to, um, and Tom doesn't have access, you will then be given the option to share the content with Tom. So again, it goes back to this whole thing around security you control who has access to it and who doesn't have access to it. Tom, will, uh, you would receive a notification saying, 
do you want Tom to have access? You click on act, yes. And then the message will go to Tom to say you have access to this document and there's a comment waiting for you, as you would get if you shared any of the other um, documents, PowerPoint presentations and so on that I'm sure you're used to already. So very simple, very straightforward. I would really recommend, and I know Dave's going to be talking more about the, 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 the great creator sites and the, and the opportunities there. All I would suggest is go and play with it. Have the option to, to go and try it, see what you can do. There, we, I'm sure we'll send out some links to the guards how to um, make the most of it. And of course, with Microsoft 365, they provide us so many different links to help you learn. Use them, but just play, practice, and really start getting that creative opportunity. Because from a L&D point of view and a comms point of view, you don't have to bring in that external provider. You are you can actually do this, which obviously saves huge amounts of money and um, saves on things like deadlines and time. So, Dave, I think that covers the, the areas that I wanted to talk about. Um, I'm sure there must be some questions that have come up, but I don't know if we're going to do them now or a bit later. Let's do them a little bit later on and we'll cover the next bit of it. So in summary, Mike, what you're basically saying is there that video becomes just the same sort of file as a Word, an Excel or a PowerPoint as far as Microsoft's concerned. It means that you can do all the things you can do uh, in terms of uh, a Word document by restricting, adding comments, sharing and of course unsharing, removing access to documents uh, is exactly the same and it becomes under the architecture of the 365 environment. So you get all the same protections that you would for any other document. Is that basically where we're at? Absolutely. And I think what, um, as you know, I'm, I'm sort of from the L&D world. And one of the big things that I've been sort of pushing is that how can we bring learning into the flow of work? And what this does, because it is now part of the 365 suite, and it gives you all of that functionality, as you rightly said, that you have with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, it just brings it into the flow. And it gives you the opportunity to work on something and work with people as you would normally. It, yeah. It's a fan. I personally think it's a fantastic step forward. And in many ways, the old stream classic was about it being an equivalent to YouTube, a place where videos were. Now stream is a app that uses to access videos and gives you more functionality, not perhaps where the videos are because the videos are now in SharePoint if you save them there or they're in your team's environment. So think of it as, a, as it is a significant change to where it was, where you used to upload your video to stream in the channel and watch it there. Now you actually watch the video as you would read a file, but using the stream app as a tool to watch the video if you go that far and of Absolutely. course to create it. So that's the key difference. So how do you then, what I wanted to cover was that perhaps how you then share videos across your SharePoint environment and across your Teams environment. So it, what we'll just pop on screen now is a screen grab from uh, how we created the, the actual page. So in old SharePoint, again, a video file, you'd link and embed stream as a, as a bit of a widget, but now you actually go, so you can see here, I've basically got our demo space and I've started to create a page and this could be a page or a news post. Either will work exactly the same. So you can see I've just done a demo page with a, with a post and I've written a little <laughs> piece of text and in the web part, I've told it I want to actually put a file and media. And by selecting file and media, that will then open up an inbox and I can go again, go to the SharePoint site where I've already saved the file. And one point to note from Mike's demonstration, you don't need to download a video to your desktop and then upload it to SharePoint. When you are in Teams and you've got a recording you want to put in, you can copy it straight to SharePoint and tell it which SharePoint site and which file. That's an important point. Uh, but then you can upload it from your machine if it's something you've created perhaps in an Adobe or another solution. Or if you want to get it from the site or your OneDrive or it's somewhere in the organization, you can do that. Even if you just got the link, put that in and click add file. As soon as you've done that, then it'll actually put the video player in your SharePoint page or post. And again, just like any other SharePoint page or post or web part, you can add a description and put those details in. So once you hit the publish button, you get all the same options you normally would when you publish a page. So you can add it to, to the navigation, you can grab the link, you can share it across Yammer. Those are exactly the same as you had before, but the video is now embedded in the post. What I think you have to think about is if you've got a video, say, for everybody in the force to watch, you want to make sure there's no access issues. So perhaps save it into your content store in a folder where everybody's already by default got access to it. 
and share it from there. Those are the sort of things to think of. So again, in this PDS hub, I've created a video folder where we can put those videos we want to share with the whole organization and know that the, the permissions are already set for that folder that it'll work. Again, if you save this in a folder where it might be only visible to a certain department, that's how you can control the access. So once you pop the video up, away you go, it's up and running. And if you just want to play it whilst it's in the SharePoint page, that's fine. If you click to open it, you can actually open it in stream. And that gives you other functions like the transcription, easy access to the comments, easy access to the chaptering. But also a really important part is analytics, specifically for our communications professionals. You know, how do you understand how it's been watched? So this is a, a video here, an example of a, a one we've, we've actually put it, I've screen grabbed it in. And you can see I've, I've clicked on the analytics tab within stream as the video owner I get access to the video analytics and I've got my total number of views my total number of viewers are in the organization and remember if it's in your SharePoint space and only people in the organization have got access to it that's who's got access to it it, it is limited and I can see higher on my timeline of how, when people drop off and then my retention. So obviously at this point in the video I lose a, few, a significant number of people it's probably when we get into the summing up bit well, I can see when people have watched it 90 days, seven days. It's not it's the fact best best analytics in the world, but it is really usable. So what does that look like in reality? And if I just show you on on a on a page, you can use the hero part on your SharePoint page to actually embed lots of videos. So I've created here a video hub page and you can see I've used the hero web part and then embedded five videos. One, two, three. Yep. Uh, into four videos, it's straight into the into the web part. It could be five, it could be three, it could be one, uh, and easily dropped it in. And then underneath it, I've actually embedded the uh, YouTube channel as well. So I've created a single place where our public videos are and our private videos are. And if I go to the demo hub that I use, again, you can see how easy it is to to use it. I'm going into a page here. I've I've actually. There's a couple of ways of doing it again. It's just preparing to edit and typical. The demo gods are playing up. It won't let me edit. There's two different web parts I've used here. I've used the hero here to embed a number of videos. And this one is just the files and video. You can see it's just simply put a video player straight in there. I can use that same web part to actually just add a news article or a Word document or an Excel. It all works together in that simple way. I'm just so let me just hit the button again, see if I can add into the edit. There we go. So you can see very simple. This is just a file viewer point. I can go in, change the file at any time, update the file, upload it from my drive. And uh, yeah, I've got some demo files here, some small ones that I've been using. So I can just pop that file in, in it goes and it's done. It's, I'll cancel that one because what I really want to do is just go back into this and show you the difference when you open stream. So this will play perfectly fine in the video. If I actually open it in stream by clicking I'm, this button here, I'll just pause, pause dug out really because uh, I'm sure you've seen this before. You can now see I am in the stream app watching that same video that I was on. I can see comments if there are any. I can access the video settings of the owner. I can even see the analytics as an owner. And again, all your transcriptions will turn in here as well. So also you've got the share button. So again, you can encourage videos to be shared amongst colleagues and, and move them on. So a great deal of change that's happened. It is a lot better. You can create these really nice interactive video hub pages. You can embed video into a news post. And of course, once it's in your SharePoint hub, it's easy to share on Teams as well. So you've got all the functionality you do. There's a lot more we could talk about with Stream and the changes that have come into place on it. Uh, and I do encourage you to have a look at it. There's a, an amazing array of fantastic creative tools. We could do, as Mike said, a whole webinar and a half on how you could use those creative tools. We'll do that perhaps again in the future. But for now, this is how you can now move videos around your organization, share them, help share them forward and, and make them on. Mike, if you've got anything else to add around uh, videos? Having come from the L&D world and, and one of the challenges has always been how do we make learning easier to access for the learner? And having that challenge around pieces being in a number of different locations. I think what this enables L&D departments, and I'm sure Dave, you'll be able to confirm as well with comms, is that th this makes it so much easier to access, so much easier to find, um, so much easier to share. And I think the, the 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 great opportunities here is that 
in a world where we are migrating more and more towards short bite-sized chunks of learning information that we want to control that we want to design and develop i think this really gives us the opportunity to take it to that next level to actually deliver content in a way that whether it be um l d people uh, people attending a course as delegates or cross organizational communications it's a great way to to get that message out there in a way that people want to accept it and to receive it um we're not obviously Microsoft salespeople, but we are here to help drive technology and give technology an opportunity to really embed across policing. And I do think that innovations like this and opportunities like this are, are really, really helpful. And I think also finally, as it is similar to any of the other Microsoft tools like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, you then have the strength and the governance around security, uh, making sure that it's only accessed by the people you want it to be accessed, and it gives you that control that you need. So if I, if I could leave those two comments around, it's a great way to get a message out there, but you still control who gets to see it. Absolutely. Uh, and I think, you know, the, you are already using these tools. You, they're part of the, the environment. We've started to use video as part of our internal comms more uh, and making the video more and more interactive with comments and editing and so on and then breaking up into segments or chapters to make so on but importantly it does encourage and enable comments and we can have a video to pass some information but then continue the debate in the comments and encourage more and more people to get involved in the discussion so that works really well as part of this solution so again fits in with all the other type of work that we're doing at, at the moment so Hopefully that's good. If you've got any questions about this or you want to know more, please get in touch with the Police Digital Service. The business engagement team are talking to your forces on a daily basis. We're there to help and, and assist you and to get the value out of the investments you have already made in the, in the technologies that you're using. So please do scan the QR code, get in touch via the PDS website. We're more than happy to help and to, to come back through to you. Uh, and again, if you do need to get in touch with your business engagement team, the details are on screen there as well very happy to help or even to connect you up if you want to do a bit more in depth into this so thanks for joining us back on our first uh, webinar straight after the easter break and we hope to see you next week thanks again